Hi everybody, Sheila with Design Stuff 18, and I just wanted to show you real quick in the blank dog bone eyelet tag or ornament design um, from Design Stuff 18 how you can use So What Pro, the embroidery program, to add lettering into this design. So if you haven't got the design file yet, you can go to www.designsbybabymoon.com and look for the blank dog bone eyelet tag, which you can see right here. Um, and this design file comes with two sizes. It has a large one that is almost four inches wide. It's 2.3 inches tall and it's 3.9 inches wide. So it will fit in your four by four hoop. The small one is so cute and tiny. I love it. Um, it is 1.56 inches tall. So just over one and a half inches tall and 2.3 fourths of an inch wide. I've got several of them right here in front of me on my desk. So in my hand, you can see the tiny one. It's super cute. It's a little bitty. The other one is just a little bit bigger. Um, but they're both um, sorted, or not sorted, but they're uh, singles and a 4x4 four four hoop so that you can add the lettering to them. And that's what I want to show you how to do today. So let's go over to our software. I've got the PES version of, <coughs> excuse me, this embroidery design open on my screen. It is, um, it has three steps as you can see over here on the object box there is the first color which is a placement stitch the second step which is um, a placement stitch to show you where you need to punch a hole and you could uh, also set an eyelet in that hole if you wanted to but it's not necessary that's completely optional the third step is a finishing stitch that runs all the way around enclosing any stitches that you add to this design with lettering it'll enclose those so that you don't see them on the back. So having said that, let's add some lettering to this. So in So What Pro, lettering, uh, there's a couple of different ways to add lettering. Let me scooch my thing over here so you can see. You know, listen to my bro. Um, I like to use this icons button right here. So this will allow me to insert lettering from the info pane, which is what they call this section over here, info pane on the side. So when you do this, you have fonts that you may have purchased from places like Stitchtopia or Designs by Juju or Rivermill or Apex or any number of um, places that you've bought design alphabets from on the internet. Um, the, they come with each letter as a separate embroidery file. And so you could merge those in individually and then individually place them. Um, but that does take quite a bit of time. So, so what pros made it easy and they'll bring them all up on screen and they'll arrange them nicely in order as you click them. So let's go to the icons button and let's, ins well, you know what, let's merge first. We're going to merge the first one and we're going to find some lettering and I have it in a file called embroidery fonts. They're not truly fonts. They're, um, embroidery alphabet design files. So I love the fonts from designs by Gigi and so I have tons of them, but let's use the adorn simple block font. It's just very, simple um you can see on the screen over here we have almost uh an inch and a half to work with in the space so i'm going to start with something smaller i'm going to start with my one inch font and we can adjust it up or down just a tiny bit in so it pro and let's add a name to this so we're going to add the name scrappy to this font so we're going to open the s and it places it nicely right there now i know that it's going to take a lot more letters than that and so what i'm going to take Oops, let's see. What do I do? I need to grab that letter and move it kind of toward the front of where I want it to be. Okay, so and when I click this icons button right here, all of a sudden in my object pane, let me move this out of the way, I have a whole bunch of letters that came up. So what it's basically doing is showing you the whole set of letters that were in that folder that you chose when you merged your first letter. So if we're going to do the word scrappy, I um, already have the S, so I would add the C. Oh, it puts it right next to it. And the R, and the A, and then a P. I click again for another P, and then a Y. <coughs> now, if, yours, if your font has both upper and lowercase letters, um, you may find uh, that you have more letters to sort through, but this file right here only has these, and that's fine with me. I'm going to um, click my icons button again so that that folder goes away but what you can see I have now in my object window are six new steps S-C-R-A-P-P-Y that's seven 
seven new steps, um, all in the same color um, at the end of my design file. So again, there's the placement stitch to show you where to lay your material down on your hoop. There's the placement stitch for the hole. There is the final finishing stitch. And then we brought in these letters. We merged the first one and then used the icon button to bring in the rest of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to get all of these to be one object. So the way we get all of the individual letters to become one object in your design pane is you go to edit and then join threads. And we want to join all these threads of the same color. We could just join all the threads of the same color starting at thread number four. That would be a way to get them all to be the same color. We could also choose to join all adjacent threads of the same color if you were, if none of the other steps of your design were the colors of the threads that you just brought in, um, you could do that as well. So any of these options would work, but do be mindful of which threads you're joining together. So we're going to join those together. And now the word scrappy is one object in our object window over here. Now I can click on scrappy and I can drag it over so that it's more centered, but it's just still a little too big for our embroidery design. So what I need to do now is grab this little corner and kind of scoot it in just a little bit so that it's not off the edge. Now, so what pro will adjust your stitching and your density for you a little bit. So you can see right now I've got 4,445 stitches. We still need to adjust this size. So let's go scoot it down just a little bit. I want it necessarily, I don't want it to be shorter. I just want it to be skinnier. Um, we still have 4,445 stitches. So let's zoom in a little bit with my mouse wheel and see. So what we want to do <coughs> is we want to make sure we don't have so many stitches in here so that it bunches up. So we can go to edit the filter the stitches and we can actually delete tiny stitches that we don't necessarily need anymore. So let's make these just a tiny bit bigger and say, okay, let's delete those. And that's going to delete I took out eight stitches. You can play with the setting and feel like if you need to delete more stitches out of the design, you can. So edit. You can adjust the density here and so on this this will allow you to adjust the density of just the letters that you put in you could decrease it by making it less dense so one is normal so less than one would give it a little bit less density so that those stitches aren't bunching up on each other just because you squished them in closer together so I'm going to do that just a little bit to 0.88 percent so that's like 88% of the original density. That's, that's a good amount for me. I just want to make sure that it's not going to bunch up, um, especially because the fonts from Designs by Juju are designed to be stitched on fabric. So they have a little bit of extra underlay on them. And we are stitching these designs on vinyl. So we don't need so much underlay because the material itself is very stable. Um, whether you're using vinyl or leather or upholstery vinyl or a glitter canvas, things like that. Um, they are a lot more stable than fabric, and they don't necessarily need all of that heavy underlay. Also, if you're pinching so many holes in the vinyl, you could actually leave holes and tear it and then distort the vinyl as well. And so I just like to remove a little bit of density in purchased embroidery fonts that aren't specific for vinyl or leather. I just like to reduce the density just a tiny bit. Um, as always, though, uh, you need to test and see what works on your machine and your computer and with what you like to your eyes. So um, this is just what I found that works for me. So let's click OK, and we've removed some stitches from this file. OK, so let's back out a little bit. Zoom back out. And now we can see, our, let's look at our steps again. Placement, placement for the hole, final outline stitch, and then our lettering. Now, our lettering in this file order, if we were just to save this design file as is now to our USB or to your machine directly, um, your lettering would stitch out after your final outline and you don't want that. So what we want to do is we want to change the thread order. There's a couple of different ways to do that. Um, you can go to edit um, order threads right here and it will tell you and you could switch the order. You could give number three, number four's position, you can give number four, number three. Another thing that you can do, let's cancel that. You could just take number three, click it with your mouse, and so you're clicking and holding, and then you can just oops, click it and hold the shift key also, and you can actually move it up one 
not. Let's see if we need it to go. Okay. Yes, it worked. So there's the placement stitch, the placement for the eyelet hole. There's our lettering. And then after we stitch out our lettering, we float a piece of material on the back of your hoop for the backing to cover up the lettering stitches. And then the final placement stitch that you run afterwards. So very easy to do in Sew Up Pro. Let's open up and let me delete um, Scrappy and let's add another name. Say we want to add a, um, a different um, alphabet name. Let's see. We, we want to merge in the first letter first. So go to your embroidery fonts files and let's find a different one. Um, let's do something scripty. So this Kaylee is a nice font and I just pick the PES versions by default. Um, and then let's go with something, let's go about with the one inch size again, and then let's pick a different name for our puppy. So let's say this puppy's name is Sophie. So we're gonna start with the capital S, that's delineate, designated here by the S capital one inch dot PES file. So that's good to me. And let's click open. It'll put it right in the middle. We don't necessarily want it right in the middle, so I'm gonna scoot it over a little bit. This pup's name is Sophie, so let's give it an O. Um, there's two O's here, and in Designs by Juju font file folders, I've learned that if there's a capital and a lowercase, they'll be right next to each other. So this O right here that I'm pointing to is a capital one, the next one is the lowercase. So we can add the O, and I love the way So What Pro kind of knows that it's a lowercase letter, and so it aligns the baselines. Now on some of them, like this P, the baseline is not quite right, so we're going to have to go in and fix that, and I'll show you what to do. But let's go ahead and add the rest of our letters in H, I, and E. Now, another thing that some embroidery fonts may have, this, then it doesn't matter who it's from, but the colors of each individual letter may be different. So we can fix all of that in just a moment. But let's deal with this P right now, because this P is not in the right place. So what you can do is you can click on the individual letter, and you can use your arrow keys on your keyboard to move it down until it looks right to your eye. Um, let's delete this icons page so we can see it. Okay, now we can see what we've got going here. Um, and so that P is in the right place, but I don't like how far away it is from the O. So I'm gonna take my arrow key again and I'm gonna go make it go more toward the O. So I'm gonna go to the left. I'm just gonna scoot just a little bit. And then I like where it is with the H, but the I needs to be over just a little bit too. So I'm going to bump it over, and now I'm going to need to bump the E over as well. <coughs> now that E is not the same color as the rest of your letters. So if we were to join this, join all these letters together, we'd only get the blacks joined. We wouldn't get the green because it's not the same color. So let's go ahead and change the color of this letter to the same as the others. So um, these came in all as brother colors. So what I need to do is find the brother color black in the list and there it is. So now all of our color letters are the same color. Okay, so now we can go over here and we can do another edit, join threads again. We can join all the threads with the same color. We can join them all because they're all right next to each other in order or we can join threads of the same color starting at thread number four. So let's do that and hit enter and they'll all be joined and now you have one object. Let's go ahead and grab that one object and drag it more to the middle of our design. And again, we want to um, take these candles on the corner and make it so that it looks nice and centered and it's within the borders of what we're gonna be stitching. So, that is it. That's all you have to do, except for we need to double check the stitching order. So we have our placement, the whole placement, the um, final outline step, and then the lettering. So let's take and push the shift key on our keyboard and move it up one. And it will be in the number three spot now instead of at the end. Um, let me remind, let's see, let's go back and double check that the order of the threads here, number one, number two, number three, and four. And then there's a dialogue to walk you through using the edit menu at the top. Okay, that's all there is to it. So at this point, if you wanted to just save it to your embroidery machine, you would stitch it out and then um, you would have a beautiful ornament 
to celebrate your pet or somebody else's pet to hang on your Christmas tree. Let me know if you have any questions or if this video was helpful. If you use another software, uh, please let me know um, what it is and maybe we can make a video on how to do it. I already have another video loaded up on YouTube that shows you how to add lettering if you use Embrilliance, the Embrilliance um, program. If you have Embrilliance Essentials, this is what you would need to add lettering into this eyelet design. Um, if there is another software that you'd like me to show you how to use, I will do my best to help you. And otherwise, thanks for watching. And please subscribe to our channel so that we can make more videos for you. And come join our Facebook group, The Designs by Baby Moon Friends and Bands. I think you'll love to see what everybody else on the group is doing with these designs. And we have a little bit of fun over there, too. So thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.